Remember that time in high school when we tried to impress our crushes during the talent show? Oh, how could I forget? We thought we were the kings of cool. And then we attempted a synchronized dance routine, but it ended up looking like a chaotic flash mob. Yeah, our rhythm was more like a malfunctioning robot than a dance duo. And when we finally struck a pose, I tripped over my own feet, landing face first on the stage. Classic. The audience probably thought it was performance art. But hey, at least we made everyone laugh. Our failed dance became legendary. True. We unintentionally set a new standard for comedy and talent shows. And let's not forget the time. We convinced the whole class that our pet rock was an exchange student. The elaborate stories we made up about Rockington were pure genius. Even the teachers bought it for a while. Until the science fair, when we had to explain why Rockington didn't contribute anything to our project. Good times. Our creativity knew no bounds, even if our grades did. High school would have been dull without our misadventures. We were the class clowns unintentionally. Absolutely! Who knew that our failed attempts at coolness would be the most memorable part of school? Remembering Rockington, our legendary pet rock, it all started as a silly joke, you know? Yeah, we found this perfectly round rock during a hike and decided it needed a personality. So we named it Rockington, the foreign exchange students who came from a mysterious rock country. We gave Rockington a backstory, a passport, which was just a doodle, and even made up an entire rock culture. Our classmates were baffled and amused. They actually believed Rockington was a genuine exchange student. Teachers, too. We had them convinced during parent-teacher conferences until someone asked to meet Rockington's parents. That's when we realized our rock solid parade was crumbling. We had to admit Rockington's true identity. The science fair was the grand reveal. Instead of a groundbreaking experiment, we had a rock with the world's best exchange student, Ribbon. Surprisingly, people loved it. Rockington became a symbol of our absurd creativity and an intentional comedy. Our failed science project turned into a rock star moment. Who would have thought a simple rock could bring so much joy? Rockington may not have contributed scientifically, but it sure left an indelible mark on our high school memories. How is the condition of Rockington now? Do you know that? Well, after the science fair, Rockington became a bit of a celebrity in our class. People started treating it like a mascot. It even had a little rock-sized cap and sunglasses. Eventually, Rockington became the symbol of our friendship and the hilarity that defined our high school days. When we graduated, we thought it was time for Rockington to retire. We found a special spot for it in a decorative box. Last I heard, it's still there, a silent witness to our quirky adventures. We should visit Rockington one day. I mean it's about the absurdity and maybe share a laugh about how a simple rock stole the spotlight in our high school journey. Absolutely. Rockington may be just a rock, but it holds a special place in the rock and roll of our memories. Hey, remember that time in school when we convinced our teacher that the cat ate my homework was a legitimate excuse? Oh, you mean the great canine caper. How could I forget? We even brought in a chewed up textbook as evidence. And the best part was, our teacher bought it. We got an extension on the assignment. Classic case of using a cliche excuse and turning it into a work of art. Picasso would be proud. 
Speaking of art, remember the disastrous art class where we attempted to sculpt a bust of our principal? Ah, yes. We aimed for Michelangelo, but we ended up with something that looked more like a mashed potato sculpture. Our art teacher tried to salvage it, calling it abstract expressionism. The principal, however, wasn't impressed. That sculpture became the talk of the school. We unintentionally created a modern art movement. And how about the time we organized a surprise birthday party for our math teacher and accidentally got the date wrong? The look on her face when we burst into the classroom with balloons and a cake a week early was priceless. She played along though. We sang happy birthday and she pretended it was the best surprise ever. We only realized our mistake when her actual birthday arrived. The perks of having a teacher with a good sense of humor. We were the kings of unintentional comedy. And who could forget the epic water balloon fights in the cafeteria? That was legendary. It started as a friendly skirmish and ended with the entire cafeteria resembling a waterlogged war zone. The janitors were not thrilled with us that day. We turned the cafeteria into a slip and slide, unintentionally. <laughs> Good times, my friend. We may not have been the model students, but we sure knew how to make school memorable. Absolutely. Our school days were like a sitcom, and we were the lead characters in the comedy of errors. Oh, speaking of sitcoms, Remember our attempt at creating a student-run TV show for the school channel? Haha, <laughs> yes, we called it High School High Jinx. It was like a mix of a sitcom and a reality show, featuring all the quirky characters from our class. The plot lines were wild, like the time we staged a fake alien invasion during a school assembly. The special effects were cut board. UFOs and tin foil hats, the chaos that ensued was absolutely sitcom worthy. And let's not forget the Cafeteria Chronicles, where we showcase the drama and comedy of lunchtime conversations. Every episode featured a different friend group, and the Cafeteria Lady became an unexpected star with her deadpan reactions to our antics. Our principal even made a guest appearance once, playing a detective investigating the case of the missing cafeteria cookies. High school hijinks became the talk of the school. We had fans, haters, and even a fan club dedicated to the fictional janitor character we created. It was a sitcom within a sitcom, a meta masterpiece of teenage absurdity. And who could forget the episode where we tried to set a world record for the largest group of students attempting to simultaneously do the chicken dance? That was chaos. The Guinness World Records people didn't recognize our attempt, but we did manage to create the world's largest flock of awkward teenage chickens. Our high school days were like a never-ending sitcom marathon if only we had a laugh track following us around. Well, we certainly provided the laughter. Our sitcom might not have won any awards, but it won the hearts of everyone who experienced the hilarity of our school days. Talking about the infamous chicken dance episode, it all started with a bet during lunch time. Right. We were arguing about who could do the best chicken dance and someone dared us to turn it into a school-wide event. Challenge accepted, of course. We quickly organized it, spread the word, and set a date for our grand chicken dance showdown. The day arrived, and the entire school gathered in the courtyard. We had a makeshift stage, a DJ playing chicken-themed music, and even a chicken mascot we borrowed from a local restaurant. 
The tension was palpable. It felt like the fate of the universe hinged on the chicken dance off. We counted down, and the music started. The first few seconds were awkward as people hesitated, but then, it was like a poultry-themed explosion. Everyone flipped their arms, wiggled their tails, and clucked in unison. It was chaos, but glorious chaos. The teachers joined in, too. Our principal, in a chicken costume, led the dance from the front. We thought we'd set a world record for the largest chicken dance, but it turns out there's no official record for that. Still, it was a feather ruffling success. The courtyard transformed into a sea of flapping arms and laughter. The local news even covered it. High school attempts world record in bizarre chicken dance extravaganza. Our attempt may not have made it into the record books, but it sure made our school the talk of the town. And the best part? We turned a simple dare into feathered fiesta that became a cherished memory of our high school escapades. Yeah, it was so nice. I will never forget that. <laughs>